Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, who are you? Um, um, my name is Olan Riwaju Suraju and I work with the, an NGO group in Nigeria called Human and Environmental Development Agenda, uh, Heda Resource Center. Okay, and uh, why are you here? Uh, okay, this is about um, interacting with the lawmakers in the Netherlands and the policymakers as well, uh, and by extension the Nigerian, um, the Dutch uh, government, uh, largely more for the Dutch citizens to uh, explain some of the issues that are behind now what is discovered and already been explained as one of the largest corporate corrupt dealings and prosecution in the history of the world and that is involving Shell and another Italian major oil company ENI in terms of their involvement in the procurement of an oil license called OPL 245 uh, now Malabu deal in Nigeria uh, in 2011 and we've had uh, some submission with the Italian uh, the Dutch prosecutors and at the same thing we at the same time we've had with the Dutch parliament as well uh, so we've been invited by the uh, committee on foreign trade um, of uh, the Dutch parliament to have an Italian action with them on the complaint that was submitted by um, my group and our other partners, the Global Witness, um, Connor House and the Common, uh, on the subject matter to the Parliament. Okay, can you uh, explain briefly what a corruption case is? Yeah, so I mean, this is about, majorly about bribery. So this is where about $1.1 billion was paid uh, by the oil companies. Uh, in disguise to a, a, a bank account that was opened in Nigerian name uh, in London. But the money was actually meant for some certain government officials and individuals and also uh, a, a company called Malabu which was owned by uh, a felon uh, that was a former government official in Nigeria that was convicted for money laundry uh, in France in 2007 and this money was originally meant to be for Nigeria but then it moved with the conspiracy of the companies and some certain individuals to private accounts and used to settle private individuals and also influence the electoral process uh, and um, the governments and democracy of Nigeria as a sovereign nation uh, by the actors, uh, the oil companies and individuals that are also working at the topmost level in the company of uh, Royal Dutch Shell and ENI. Uh, in, in conspiracy with some uh, officials in Nigeria. Is it a well-known case in Nigeria? Oh yes, it is actually a well-known case. Uh, it is all over the media. Uh, the Nigerian government is prosecuting uh, both the company and also some individuals in the company. Uh, there are four different separate cases in court uh, filed by the Nigerian government against the company and also individuals in the company against some former government officials in, in, uh, in Nigeria. Uh, and um, my organization is also, has also filed another action you know, to compel the Nigerian government to revoke the oil license from uh, the oil companies, considering the fact that based on the current uh, contract, Nigeria has not only lost $1.1 billion that went into bribery, uh, we also have the potentials for losing about $5.6 billion uh, because the whole essence of the profit oil and tax or uh, profit uh, in the contract that was signed in 2011 would deprive the country of about $5.6 billion. Um. Why do you think it's important that also the Dutch people know more about this case? Uh, because this crime has been committed by Royal Dutch Shell. So you remember it is not just Shell, it is Royal Dutch Shell. The crime has been committed uh, in the name of the government of the Netherlands. Uh, the, uh, royal family in the Netherlands and the Dutch people entirely. So it is important that the Dutch citizens get to understand uh, the level of alleged crime that is committed in their name uh, and they need to start asking questions and to ensure both probity and accountability on the part of, of the oil companies. Uh, you told in the hearing that you're uh, familiar with uh, the Netherlands and with Dutch people and uh, you said something about uh, 
uh, how, how they find it hard to believe that corrup corruption exists. Can you explain that again? Yeah, yeah like that, because I, I had the opportunity of schooling in the Netherlands and also benefit from the generosity of the Dutch people through uh, the program called the Netherlands Fellowship Program uh, that supports you know uh, people from developing countries uh, to have educational uh, opportunity in the Netherlands. You know, I've had reasons to. Um, live with those people and I've had reason to observe that they don't in any way um, condone corruption. Uh, they were shocked, they would be shocked to know that not only uh, those some Dutch people involved in corruption, they would be shocked to know that a company bearing the royal name uh, and also Dutch people is committing bribery and corruption uh, in their name. So there's a need to actually establish this and then push such that um, those citizens start taking interest in some of these cases to ensure that you know further atrocities are not committed in their name. But for me, I know uh, to a very large extent um, how much uh, those people respond to the issue of corruption and there's a need to actually establish this to them. Okay, last question. Uh, the, the parliament member of Partij voor de Dieren asked about uh, the six billion dollars because he's worried about the climate, uh, that, uh, uh, that six billion dollars will come from uh, pumping the oil up. But you explained that it's uh, a bit different. No, yeah, because the total of what we've had now is about six billion would be lost in, in that uh, uh, the whole transaction in, in the final analysis. And for us, it is very crucial to establish that some of the cases that are already in court uh, have the potential for benefiting Nigeria to the tune of about six billion. And for us, if Nigeria should get that amount of money from some of the cases that are already instituted against uh, the oil companies, then it is important uh, that the oil uh, block is kept in the ground uh, and that is not allowed to eventually uh, contribute to the climate change issue. So we're really going to push for the Nigerian government after benefiting from uh, compensations uh, and also some fines from the legal process that the oil block is left in the ground. Okay, uh, well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.